We're back with Chris Hayes, everybody. Now, uh, there was an aid bill, international yes. aid bill for uh, Ukraine and Israel, among others. Taiwan 90, got in there, too. Taiwan got in there. $95 billion. Yep. 20 Republican senators voted for it as well. So yep. this actually looks maybe from the outside as a moment of bipartisanship. Donald Trump didn't think any Republican should vote for it. Do you feel like that's the case at all? Should we look at this and say, oh, this reminds me of, of old DC where people could get together on certain things? I mean, I, uh, a little bit. I mean, I think that's sort of what you're seeing in the Senate bill. But the, the, the issue now is the House. And the issue right. in the House, there, there are two issues in the House. Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, has basically already said it's down on arrival. Right. And the, the thing everyone has to keep in mind here, I, I know this is like, we all lived through this, so it's not that long ago, but Vladimir Putin like undertook a campaign of incredibly risky international criminal sabotage to get Donald Trump elected the first yes. time, right? Yes. Like Trump knows where his bread is buttered. Yes. He wants to kill aid for Ukraine. The Republican party answers to him. It would be the single biggest geopolitical victory for Putin if aid were to go away with an army resisting Russian aggression that's literally running out of bullets so that there could be a negotiated settlement that gives a big chunk of Ukraine to Russia. That is what Putin wants. Donald Trump basically wants to deliver for that and is basically whipping the Republican Party against it. So I don't know what its prospects are in the House. The other thing is, this is also aid to Israel, and there are many, many Democratic votes that are not going to want to, certainly with no strings attached, continue to supply arms to the Israeli government now, you know, well past the 100th day of this war with nearly 30,000 casualties in Gaza. That would be why you would say this is the way politics is supposed to work. You put Ukraine and Israel together, and people, you know, realize that in order to get something they want, they have to sacrifice something they don't. Exactly. But the weird thing about this, and this is this is a strange part of this, right? So the whole idea, when we go back four months, was that Republicans said, we won't vote for Ukraine unless you give us a border bill. So they spent four months. They negotiated a border bill. Every Republican who negotiated had been like, this is literally the best thing we'll ever get. Yep. It's the best thing we'll ever get from the Democrats. And Donald Trump killed it because he wants the problem rather than the solution. He wants the border to look bad, so you get reelected. So now, Mike Johnson the other day, I love this. He said, well, you know, if you want to do this aid bill, we're going to have to do something on the border. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. No, we just did this. I said, if you've ever programmed, if you've ever been a computer programmer, this is an infinite loop. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Like, if border, no. You need aid, no. For to get aid, you need border. And you just keep going around like this. And it seems like the only thing the House actually wants to do about the border is impeach uh, uh, Secretary Mayorkas, which they failed to do but they're gonna try again because they didn't miss by many votes the first time. They, by, by the way, I don't, you've done this on the show, I think, but the, the way they missed the first time is amazing. Yeah. Al Green, Democratic congressman from Texas, had surgery, literally rolled up to the Capitol in a wheelchair and hospital scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> to, to cast a deciding vote to defend Mayorkas. Now they're gonna do it again. And the reason they're doing it again is because they might lose the one vote of their majority if the special election today goes the wrong way. And they are impeaching a cabinet secretary for the first time in 150 years. So this is a terrible precedent, which is shockingly what maybe only, I guess, three Republicans the first time. Yep. That was their case for why not to do it is this is a terrible precedent. We cannot even name a crime we're accusing him of, of committing. It, it's manifestly one of the most sort of shocking abuses of procedure I've seen. There is not even the pretext of a scandal or a, a high crime misdemeanor. There is a, a, a uh, policy difference at the level of policy, anger at the way that things have been implemented, which is fine, that's politics, that happens everywhere. You can drag them for oversight hearings, you could try to defund the department, you could do whatever you wanna do. There is no high crime misdemeanor here, and they know that. 160 years ago, when the, the cabinet member Belknap was, was impeached, there was like, it was like this enormous kickback scheme where he was like getting payments from people he was putting into positions. Like, that's the kind of bar for this. And now we've got it. We don't like your politics. We just killed a border bill and we need to keep the issue alive. Hence, we're gonna impeach you. Well, it's fun times all around. <laughs> Thank you so much for making it here Thank through this blizzard. I saw you trudging up the street. Chris Hayes, everybody. All in with Chris Hayes airs weeknights today on MSNBC. Why is this happening is available wherever you listen to your podcast. We'll be right back. Geraldine, this went a thing.